IM Trial World Championship is back on the road for round five. Trial GP Portugal is the third of four events in five weeks. Located right on the edge of the country's largest national park, host town Gouveia made its first appearance on the calendar back in 2004 and made a successful return last season. There can be no denying the rivalry between podium regulars Jeroni Fajano and Adam Raga, who were separated by just three points in the 2018 battle for silver and looked set for another close run-in in 2019. But rivalries are lived uniquely in trials, both over the course of a championship and from round to round. Clearly, trials is an individual sport in the sense that you aren't riding head-to-head -head with your rivals. You're competing with yourself to do everything as well as possible. But in the end, to win, you have to beat the others, so there is real rivalry with the rest of the riders in the championship. For sure, within a race, there can be a lot of strategy. Trying to watch your main rival, for example, if time and starting order permits. Often you're fighting with people who've started around you, so you can try either to race ahead if you're feeling good and put him under pressure, or wait and watch his mistakes to score better yourself. You either know your rival's score from the section you're about to ride, or you know his overall score. Either way, there's a lot of pressure, and that makes this sport very psychologically challenging. Perhaps halfway through the championship, you have a good idea who your rivals are going to be at the end of the season, but the key is to take it one race at a time. There are a lot of riders in outdoors who go better in one round or another, so as the weekends roll on and you get partway through the season, that's when you find out who's the strongest. Last year, Gironi rode at a very high level in every round. Me too, but in the end I missed out on the runner-up ranking by just a fraction. This year again, he seems strong and he's a rider who deserves credit because of his longevity at this high level. Just beating Adam is a very strong result. People only think about Tony, but if he wasn't around, then Adam would be 15 or 16 times world champion. So beating a top rider like Adam is a great satisfaction. As well as the rivalry for second position in the 2019 standings, several other rankings remained up for grabs arriving in Portugal. Behind the established lead six, the majority of the modern era's so-called new generation continued their pitch battle over seventh position. Franz Cadlec leads the way in that scrum at present, pursued closely by Jorge Casales and Benoit Bincaz, both of whom outscored him last time out in Belgium. Since a disappointing start to the campaign in Italy, Casales in particular has impressed and he arrived into Gouveia with three consecutive top six finishes to his name. Benoit Bincaz, by contrast, opened 2019 with a career best fourth place in Pietra Marata, but has steadily dropped back to ninth. Two weeks on from their visit to Comblau Pont, the same 13 riders lined up for Trial GP Portugal. With just a point separating third from fourth and the same margin between riders in fifth and sixth, rankings were on the line at round five. Town centre trials in Gouveia, embedded between spectators and roads and a Strider River, one of the most spectacular qualifying sections of the season so far. Tony Bow recorded his third consecutive pole, topping each of the sessions in Portugal to secure the advantageous last starting position for race day. But Saturday was not without thrills and spills, despite the familiar winner. Five-time pole sitter Jaime Busto stumbled his worst ever qualifying result in 13th. The former world number three, the only rider to fail the section at both attempts and therefore left at the bottom of the pile. 
but there were challenges to Bo. No less than three riders dipping below his Q1 time on the second lap to apply the pressure. James Dable was the first, over a second clear of the world champion's first effort on his way to the runner-up ranking. Adam Ragger aimed one better, but instead tumbled to a fiasco, leaving himself relying on the steady banker lap set in Q1 that was only good enough for 11th, the first time he has qualified out of the top 10 this season. By contrast, Takisa Fujinami enjoyed his best qualifying of the campaign, the Japanese veteran matching his best ever result with third and falling just eight hundredths of a second short of Dable's efforts. That left Tony Bowe to steal the show as he found almost one and a half seconds on his second run to snatch pole position by a mere two tenths of a second. Just under two seconds separate the lead group from first to fifth. Franz Kadlec within that pack thanks to a strong Q2, producing his best ever qualifying result. Two rounds still remain in the Women's World Championship, but with a third consecutive win, Emma Bristow is now within touching distance of her sixth world title. While the Sherco star has remained faultless, her rivals have taken points from one another. Five different riders had already made the podium in the opening two trials of 2019. The top three in Gouveia reflected the medal position from the 2018 Women's World Championship and the pecking order this season so far. Spaniards Sandra Gomez and Berta Abellan were tied leaving Japan, but an underwhelming second lap for Gomez in Portugal broke the deadlock between them in the standings. Gomez had trailed her younger rival by just two marks early on, but three failures in the first six sections of the second lap dropped her further back and she eventually finished ten marks down. At just 19 years of age, Berta Abellan is considered the future of the Women's World Championship but she remains keen to prove she's very much the present as well. Having slugged it out with the series' current dominant force, Emma Bristow, through a demanding day in Portugal, Abiyan came off second best this time, but she finished just seven marks shy of top spot, and only the fact that she scored five cleans fewer than the series leader stopped her from challenging even more closely. Emma Bristow required mechanical intervention to get her day back on track after she submerged her Sherco in Gouveia. But under severe pressure and the threat of losing her series lead, Bristow remained calm and largely out of the water for the rest of the day to take another crucial win in the context of the 2019 championship. Only three marks separated the top three at the end of the first lap, but Bristow dug in determinedly in the final nine sections of the day with just two drop marks to total 20 cleans. Only a seven-mark advantage for Bristow in a competitive Portuguese Grand Prix. Mercia misses out on fifth through countback. Hackinson instead behind Brancati, who secures a career-best result in fourth. I had a few problems on the first lap. Um, the bike went under the water and I thought the day was finished, which meant the World Championship was finished. So, yeah, I'm super happy to, to finish the trial and also in the first position. Hopefully next week my riding will be better. <laughs> Each securing their second podium finishes of the campaign, Berta Abiyan and Sandra Gomez pull further clear of the chasing pack. Invig Hackinson and Neos Mercia are nine points back from the medal positions. Three different podiums in 2019, but the one common theme is victory for Emma Bristow. Her 13-point lead and unbeaten record makes her comfortable favourite for the latest women's world title. The Portuguese Grand Prix may well become a turning point in the Trial 2 World Championship. Reigning title holder Matteo Grattarola had looked comfortable at the top of the 2019 standings, nursing a 14-point advantage over the first of the young guns arriving in Portugal. But this latest weekend was a completely different story. A low-scoring trial, no runaway victory, and every rider under pressure right to the finish. On a competitive day when just 14 marks separated 1st from 10th, 
five fiascos for Matteo Grattarola left him down the order in seventh, his worst result since a tenth place at the same venue last season. Grattarola breaks the century mark for championship points scored in 2019, but dropping off the podium for the first time this campaign means he now sits just three points clear of his nearest rival, the lowest his advantage has been since the end of the opening round in Italy. Alexandre Ferrer's move back down to trial two for 2019 has hardly gone to plan. Just four years ago, the Frenchman was world number seven in trial GP. This year, the youngsters have largely showed him up. Japanese Grand Prix winner, though, made it back onto the podium for only the second time in 2019 with a runner-up position and could have easily secured another victory. A single dab in the penultimate section of the day, leaving him tied at the top. He was unfortunate to miss out on countback. Twenty-four cleans for Gabriel Marseille gave him a much-needed victory in the context of his championship challenge, enabling him to pull back 11 points on Matteo Grattarola in the series standings and thus to reignite the title race. The Spaniard had sat only third at the end of the opening lap, but he benefited from a penultimate section fiasco from his Montessa RG trial teammate Frances Moret to recover the lead in the final minutes of the day. With only four points separating the top five in the end, good fortune undoubtedly played its part for Marseille. The world champion needs luck as well as determination, and the reigning number three certainly hasn't given up just yet. Lorenzo Gandola is the unexpected and unsung hero of Trial 2 Portugal, bettering his previous finish of ninth with the first podium of his career. And but for errant dabs in the second half of the final lap, he could have matched Marseille too. It wasn't easy. The first lap I wasn't particularly strong. I made a few mistakes. Thankfully, I was able to make it up on the second lap, even though we had a couple of mechanical problems. We arrived in the final sections, all very closely packed in terms of points. I knew I was roughly there, but I didn't know exactly what I needed to score at the end to win. I did the best I could, and in the end, riding the last sections clean was enough. I'm very happy, especially to have made so many points in the championship compared to Grattarola, who still leads at the moment. It's set to be very exciting this year. Toby Martin loses three further points to Matteo Grattarola and his hopes of claiming the 2019 world title are fading. He also begins to come under pressure from Alexander Ferrer for bronze. But former world number two, Gabriel Marseille, is very much back in the mix for the 2019 crown. The fifth trial two victory of his career, putting him closer than he's ever been before. <laughs> Gouveia produced, in general, a low-scoring day with hot and dusty conditions and plenty of grip. But with five of the 15 sections plotted into a riverbed, there was no shortage of water hazards to put the riders under pressure also. Trial GP Portugal proved close fought and also enlightening as far as the form guide in 2019 is concerned. Dan Peace found himself cut adrift of the rest of the pack in Portugal, finishing bottom of the pile for the second time in his rookie trial GP campaign. Peace was already eight marks down on his nearest rival, fellow countryman Jack Price, at the end of the opening lap, and in his second run through the course he failed to improve. Two laps, each at 52 marks, the Sherco rider with four fiascos more than any of his rivals, 20 marks back with over 100 to his name. Franz Kadlec has enjoyed his best ever start to a trial GP season, but his 2019 took a turn for the worse in Gouveia. Four consecutive failures in the second half of the first lap left the German outside of the top 10, and for the first time this campaign he was unable to recover, an 84 mark total leaving him down in 12th. This disappointing result for Kadlec means he drops down to 8th overall, his lowest ranking since the season opening Italian Grand Prix. Jack Price claimed 11th, his second consecutive finish outside of the top 10 that leaves him 11th overall to match with a 10-point gap to his nearest rival. 
Nonetheless, there was some consolation as he kept pace with the rest of the pack and snatched a place from Franz Kadlec in the final three sections of the day. The Gas Gas rider recovering a two-mark deficit to the German from the opening lap. Arnaud Ferre enjoyed his best finish of 2019 and a first top 10 placement, but it could easily have been more. Ferre sat two places higher at the end of lap one and still held ninth in the latter stages before dropping seven marks in the final three sections and losing out. In the end, a mere eight cleans cost him a better ranking, but Ferre is steadily gaining in confidence in this first season with Hotagas, and this was a more than satisfactory result. Unusually for the cool-headed Frenchman Benoit Bincaz, round five of the season turned into a clean or five day. In only four sections out of 30 did he score any other result. Thankfully for Bincaz, that balance was weighted in favour of cleans and three in succession to end the day squeezed him into ninth position. With Franz Kadlec three places behind, that was a decent result in the context of the championship, but he didn't gain any spots and he's lost five further points in the battle for seventh overall. On this occasion, it was five second lap failures, more than any of his competitors ahead, that cost him a better result. <laughs> Battling back from three fractures sustained on his upper jawline in Belgium, Mikel Jalabert performed a superb second lap to claim eighth position. Having sat down in 10th at the end of lap one, the lead Sherco rider recovered nicely with just two further failures. He wasn't far away from seventh position either, but was denied by four time penalty marks. Still, this was a brave and confident way to shake off a painful Belgian Grand Prix, and Gelabert gained important points on the two riders just above him in the series standings. Jaime Busto continues his run of finishing between fifth and seventh in every 2019 round, but his hopes of returning to the top three are all but over, some 22 points back. In his latest fight with James Dable, the two packed closely together in Portugal and in the series standings, Busto mainly missed out because of back-to-back -back failures in sections 8, 12 and 15. Dable scored just over half the Spaniards' total in those same areas of the course. For Dable, now level with Busto for fifth in the championship, it was a best result since Japan. The Brit's second lap was simply superb, and had he been able to put in a similar effort in the early stages, he would have been a contender for victory. With eight cleans in the last nine sections of the day, Dable has once again proven he belongs among the world's best. Rivals for third in the world, Taki Fujinami and Jeroni Fajardo proved particularly evenly matched in Portugal, but it was four time penalty marks that cost the Japanese veteran in the battle for bronze. The two contenders handed in identical scorecards at the end of the day, but Fujinami's tardiness meant he finished not only behind his direct rival, but also behind Jorge Casales. Trial GP Portugal is the first time since Italy that Fujinami has finished outside of the top four, and he wasn't far away but for sections 8 and 12 that he failed at each attempt, he would have been higher still. Jorge Casales continued his brilliant 2019 resurgence with a fourth consecutive double-figure championship score. Fourth place, the closest he has come to the podium this season. Casales was top vertigo performer thanks in part to his success in section 8 and by becoming the only rider through section 12. And now eight points clear of Franz Kadlec after the German's Portuguese disaster, Casales also closes in on teammate Jaime Busto and threatens to make it a three-way fight for fifth in the world with James David. <laughs> Jeroni Fajardo's hopes of overhauling Adam Racker for the silver medal position in 2019 look faint now after his latest defeat at the hands of his fellow countrymen. Setting aside Fajardo's underwhelming weekend in Japan, the pair have been evenly matched, but the 16 points he dropped in Mategi now reflect the gap between the top two in the championship standings. That said, this was far from a disastrous result for Fajardo, his fourth podium in six trials. And with Takisa Fujinami down in fifth here, he has some margin for error in the battle for bronze as well. 
In the end, Fajardo will reflect on his pair of failures in Section 8, as well as an errant first luck fiesco on Section 3. Errors that combined cost Fajardo 14 marks to Raga, who nonetheless finished only four marks clear in seconds. A stuttering start to the day left Adam Raga in danger of missing out on the podium. Having been the only rider in the eventual top six to fail Section 1, he then suffered another in Section 3. But with only three fiascos in the remainder of the day, he closed steadily on his final runner-up ranking. A total of 20 cleans and 12 marks second lap were the keys for Raga to steady the ship. And crucially, in the context of the championship, he got back in front of Jeroni Fajardo after Section 8 on the second lap. Beating his gas gas rival in Portugal enables Raga to put one hand on the silver medal for 2019. He's yet to drop from the podium this season and would likely have to do so twice for Fajardo to have any hopes of overhauling him. Tony Bowe rode the only single digit lap of the day to secure his sixth victory of the 2019 campaign and ensure that he heads to France next week with an opportunity to seal the world title. Bowe actually briefly trailed in Portugal, Jeroni Fajardo getting off to the strongest start, but Fajardo's section 8 and 13 fiascos enabled Bo to recover the lead, and from there he was never headed. A five-mark advantage at the end of the opening lap became 10 after Adam Raga's section 3 failure on lap 2, and only a four-mark time penalty cost Bo any of that ground. He failed just three sections all day leaving him ultimately victorious by a seven-mark margin. This latest victory calls to mind celebrations this time last season in Gouveia when Bo hit the century mark and claimed the all-time win record. He hasn't been beaten since then and now stacks up 12 trial GP victories in succession. If he defeats Adam Raga in France next week, he'll be crowned world champion with a round to spare. Only small margins between the leaders at Trial GP Portugal. Just eight marks separating second from fifth, and even Tony Bow at the head of the field, just seven marks clear of his nearest rival. Jorge Casales and Arnau Ferre record season's best results. It was a shame to have run in second for so long, only then to make a big mistake in section 13 of the opening lap. But everything else was pretty good. I'm happy with the team and my riding, and I want to carry on like this, working to maintain these positions. I'm happy with how today has gone. It has been a hard day. Yesterday I was only fifth in qualifying, so I had to start early, which is always a disadvantage. But I rode well during the race, admittedly making a couple of mistakes. But I'm happy with my riding and with second place. It was a difficult trial to gain any advantage. The first lap, we lost a lot of time starting last. That meant I had to do a really good second lap. I was under a lot of pressure right to the end, but I managed it. Not an ideal race for us, so being able to win here was important for us. Jorge Casales leapfrogs Franz Cadlec and James Dable is now level with Jaime Busto. The two changes to the pecking order in Portugal. Fights for third, fifth and eighth will be in focus next time out in France. But it's win number six this season for Tony Bowe, the 110th of his career, that leaves him 22 points clear of Adam Raga and Jeroni Fajardo. The Portugal podium is likely to be replicated in the 2019 World Championship.